Okay, it's on. Hello YouTube, I'm finally back again. It's nice to see you all. Um, never guess where we've been. We've been on all sorts of adventures for the past um, few months. I actually got, I actually got married. Oh! In the beautiful um, place of Hawaii. It was absolutely gorgeous. I don't know, how do we do it? Like, uh, oh <laughs> Lord, just like literally going like. Like, how do we do it together? I don't know. Be nice when, oh, like this. Here we are, that so looks, looks couple-y. Oh, let it all focus. You've got to focus just on your face all the time. Move my face. Is, can you see it yet? Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. Doing it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I took way too much effort. Thank you everyone to, you know, that sent us gifts and well wishes. It's much appreciated, so thank you. Today we decided to look at the altar, so I need to introduce them to you. Um, and so it's really important for me to just talk a little bit about them today. So the main thing about having dissociative identity disorder is that you have altars. So altars are considered altered states of consciousness. That's the big long name for them, essentially. Um, and sometimes people call them parts, identities, or whatever other way, you know, whatever other word you want to use for them. So when a child experiences trauma, basically a part of their being, a part of their consciousness, breaks apart. Um, and that's when alters actually begin to be created. That's how a child forms DID. So when they can't fight or they can't flight, a body can go, you know, the brain can go into a mode where um, it decides to detach the memories altogether. And by doing that, it detaches a part of its conscious state. That conscious state becomes an altered state of consciousness. Um, and hey ho, you have altars, and that's how it's, that's how they're made. All of that is done to protect the poor child at hand. Um, so altars are actually a great thing. They're nothing like the Hollywood movie myths um, of like you know the axe wielding murderer and the big plot twists at the end of like most um, you know psycho film. And actually, the gentleman who diagnosed me said in the twenty or so years he'd been seeing altars, not one, not any other specialist guy, not one altar had ever harmed him or done anything to you know, upset anyone. It's just that terrible stereotype and it really needs to stop. I mean, at the moment, the statistics are generally on what paper you read, about 1% of the population. Um, it's still a very true fact that actually DID is much more common than people let on to and people realise. So you can imagine actually how many people in society are functioning adults with this disorder that just try and get by. Um, and I will talk to you a little bit about that as we go on. So with this altered state of consciousness, obviously they form their own experiences and they form their own opinions, they form their own likes, dislikes, likes as they manage themselves and grow. Um, you know, even if uh, an altar is stuck in time or stuck at a certain age, they still have experiences from the outside world and that certainly may change their character. They may become more 3D, three-dimensional as people um, and really sort of fit into their own. They can have a different gender or a different way of how they view themselves, how they see themselves, how tall they should be, what colour hair they should have. And they can be a whole host of different type of altars. So you can have animal alters, inanimate objects, an abuser or persecutor that's maybe like an interject of somebody from the outside, have child alters that are known by littles, caretakers and soothers, which is sort of like the general alters that take care of the system, make people feel better, often spend a lot of time with kids, that sort of thing. Also have the core alter. In this case it would be me, um, because it sort of is my body and it is my life that I'm leading. Um, although for a lot of systems that's not necessarily the case. You can have somebody who um, is actually, isn't actually the original person, it's not the original part of the system, but they host now, so you can consider them the host. Fictional and non-fictional alters. Fragments, and fragments are very much um, sort of almost like a, a more 2D version of an altar, so they maybe just be set to do a certain part or carry a certain memory or say a certain word or feel a certain way. Whatever it is, um, they don't seem to be as uh, well-rounded. In terms of research, if we were looking at sort of scientific terms, we would follow the theory of structural dissociation. Now, structural dissociation formulates alters into sort of two different sides. So one is called an apparently normal part, and the other one is called an emotional part. The apparently normal part may not have any history or knowledge of past trauma or past goings on that's happened and actually just want to live an apparently normal life. So they can help the host do things like get washed, get dressed, cook, you know, clean, just go to work, just do ordinary things. Um, and an emotional part often hold trauma, they have difficult memories, they can be stuck in time, and they can have sensory experiences of the past and everything else, you know, that can be quite that often has to be divulged in with therapy, um, those parts can carry quite a lot of. For my system in general, really we have a lot of ANPs, so we have a lot of apparently normal parts, which 
makes my life a lot easier. So for my system, I have five altars. One is including me, because I'm technically still considered, you know, a state of consciousness, so that's me. There's also Ed, Jamie, Jake, and Ollie. So those are my four boys and me. And I also have two fragments, so two parts that are for like a lesser role or a lesser job. Uh, who carry just sort of emotions and memories and things like that. So for this video today, my idea is to introduce my boys to you guys so you can see what they like and have a little bit of an idea of what an altar is actually like. Now my boys in the video today have been sort of told to dress up uh, a little bit more like themselves or just to make them distinctive. That doesn't mean to say that you know, the moment that they go out and about in public that they put on their clothes and things that make them feel more comfortable but it is just to make sure that we can see some differentiation. Okay, let's get this started. You can set yourself on fire. You can set yourself on fire. My name's Jamie, I'm 26 years old and I am the main protector from the system. Okay, so my name is Ed, I'm 28 and I am an altar in the system. Hey YouTube, my name is Jake, I'm 24 years old and I'm also one of the protectors for the system. Today we're supposed to do some sort of challenge um, whereby we're supposed to hold up like our names and then decide who fits the answer to the question the best. Let's go. Here are some questions for each of the boys. Question one. Who's the smartest? Ah, me. That would be Jamie. Jamie. He's the most intelligent bloke I know. That would be Jamie. But I am the smartest. Just because I am. Who's the most creative? Ooh, uh, that's gotta be Ed. Ooh. See, now, I would say Ed, I think, because he does a lot of art. He's very good with like coming up with ideas for cooking, baking, uh, just generally good meal ideas. Uh, yeah, and he's just very good with his hands overall. So I'm going with Ed. I reckon Jake, because he's into his performing arts and he sings and he plays guitar and yeah, he's good with like music and stuff. So I reckon Jake definitely like. He's really good with like painting and uh, drawing and just, yeah, his creative ju juices just continuously flow. <laughs> uh, he also loves like cutting and dyeing hair and stuff like that and he enjoys like painting nails and doing makeup. Who's the loudest? <laughs> I don't know. I don't reckon none of us are like too loud. I'm gonna go with Jake. Yeah. I'm going to pick Jake, I think, because when Jake gets a bit like wound up, he can get like quite loud and quite like, oh my days are like, look at me, look what's going on, and yeah, so I'm going to pick Jake. Ah, uh, I don't know, who's the loudest? Uh, I think me, I think, I think I have the loudest voice, and I think, I probably like when I get really excited, that's probably when I kind of get on people's nerves and talk too much, so I'm going to, I'm going to vote me for loudest person in the system. I don't know. Vicky, would you say I, I'm, I can be loud? Yeah. Am I louder than Jake? Yeah. I am. Oh, okay, interesting. Housemate doesn't agree. <laughs> Who is the heaviest sleeper? <laughs> Jamie. He snores like a freight train. Me. I can snore so loudly. <laughs> I think that's also me because I like dribble and <laughs> I can like fall asleep like everywhere and like anywhere and when I do fall asleep I sort of just like dribble and it's so beautiful like you guys are missing out seeing that beauty. Who's the most introverted? That'd be it. Nothing like a, a wine and a, and a glass of wine and a good book. Um, that prefers his own company definitely. Oh, uh, that's got to be Ed. Oh, that's got to be me, I think. I don't really like people. I don't really like spending time with people. I don't like giving my time and attention to people. I've got like a small group of mates, like a proper small group that I absolutely cherish and I'll do anything for. Um, and then I've got people that I will spend my time with, but they drain my energy kind of thing. So, 
but I'm proper conscious of that. Whereas like Jamie and Jake, they they're like proper social and there's no problem. But yeah, so I'm gonna pick me. Who's the most controlling? Oh, I don't like controlling. That's a horrible description. I guess Jamie because he runs our system technically. Like he makes all the decisions. Oh, that'd be me. I reckon. Like, I'm so. I don't know. I just like knowing where people are, what they're doing. I also do like budgeting and I'm proper conscious of that. So I'm gonna go for me because I'm quite uh, quite tight on money and I like to know where every penny's gone. So I'm gonna pick me. I'm gonna say Ed because he's very meticulous and likes things a certain way and he likes to know exactly what's going on. And technically it could also be me because um, I organise this system, I give it the plan, I let everybody know what we're going to do in our day. I sort of talk about, um, you know, if we're going to go, you know, what we're going to do like after work and what we have planned for the weekend. It sort of does come down to me and how I organise everyone, but Ed still wears the trousers. <laughs> Who has the biggest ego? Oh, Jamie. <laughs> I know that one's Jamie, definitely, without a doubt. <laughs> Always just just me. Ta -da! <laughs> Sorry bro. I'm gonna go for Jamie too. Um Jamie knows that he's like a beautiful person and he knows that he's like attractive or whatever and uh he also thinks he's got like a great personality. Not saying you don't, Jamie, not saying you don't. Um, and it's great to have that. I think it's really, actually really nice to have that confidence about yourself. Like, you know, yes, I'm attractive and yes, I'm good looking and whatever. No, no, that's a bad thing. I like, I like his confidence. I think it's nice to have a change in this world where you actually like, yeah, I'm like good looking or yeah, I'm this and yeah, I'm that. I'd never ever be able to do that. And that's something I proper admire, so Jamie. He owns it. He owns that stuff. Who holds grudges the longest? Oh, that'd be Ed. Definitely would be Ed. Ah! Ed. I think with Ed, you've gotta be careful not to get on his bad side. He, he's real big on the truth. Like, you have to tell him the truth. If you don't tell him the truth, um, and he finds out you've lied, that is pretty much like, you know, like the saying the elephant never forgets, or the Ed never forgets in our system. Very important, you want to be on Ed's good side, you make sure you always tell him the truth, no matter how painful it might be. Oh, that's, that's me, again. Sorry. If you piss me off, you'll know about it, I'll tell you to your face. I can't just brush it under the carpet, like, Jake and Jamie both have a way of sort of forgiving people and moving on, but... Actually, I think that's counterproductive because these guys are supposed to be protectors and if they're sort of forgiving every person that sort of treats us like a doormat in our time, then sort of counterproductive really, isn't it? So, yeah, I think me, I hold the grudges, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Who's the biggest fidget? That would be Jake. Oh, Jake, he's like a little kid. He's like one of them like pull string things, like you wind it up or whatever and it just goes, it's Jake. Yeah, that's got to be me. Totally me, totally me. Can I get a prize for fidgety and fidgetiness and just being excited? <laughs> Can't keep him still. <laughs> um, especially when he's excited, when he's got some idea or some plan. It's very much like, oh, you know, you're just like a little bottle of pop. Um, so yeah, Jake. Who's the most laid back? Ah, uh, Jamie. It's Jamie. Because, like, as much as I'd like to think, like, oh yeah, with all my meditation and stuff, I could just be, like, a laid-back person, I really have to work at it. Like, I really have to, you know, take, take deep breaths where I need to. But Jamie is much more, like, it just comes natural to him. Like, so, you know, the world could start collapsing. He'd be kind of like, well, it's gonna happen, but, you know, he's just pretty, pretty chill. So, actually, I'm gonna go for Jamie. Who's the cleanest? Ed. He really loves the smell of bleach. Oh, that's gotta be Ed. Cleanest is me. Jamie don't do a bad job either, um, but Jess and Jake are both terrible. Who's the messiest? <laughs> me! Oh, who's the messiest? That'd be Jake. Like, all over Jake. Jake is by far the messiest. 
Have you ever known a person to just shed their clothes? Like just come home from a long day at work and just start stripping off their clothes and leaving them everywhere? That is exactly what Jake does. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I've already like made a mess across the counter from setting this thing up. Uh, definitely good reminder to clean that up later. So yeah. Who's the most childish or immature? <laughs> Jake is the most immature because he's sort of like Peter Pan. He's just trapped in this. Um, he's just he just expects sort of the world to do everything for him, and he, he hasn't really gotten out of that. Um, you know, mummy will take care of it sort of upbringing. So it's Jake, but it's got to be Jake because he is like. I guess that he's sort of in bubble wrap, he's sort of in his own little world, which is great and fluffy and lovely. Um, but that don't that don't give him like a free pass from adult responsibilities. So Oh, that's harsh. Uh, um I'm gonna say Jimmy because he laughs at his own jokes, like real bad laughs at his own jokes. He thinks he's like so funny. Um Yeah. I guess, in, like, if you're asking the question, who's the most, like, dependent, then yeah, okay, it would be me, but it's Jamie because he laughs at his own jokes and, um, thinks he's, like, really funny, but he's not. <laughs> I'm not wording this well. Who loves alcohol the most? Huh? It's gonna be me and my wine. I love my wine. Like, my red wine. Um, so yeah, it's gotta be me. <laughs> I say Ed, he loves his glass of wine. Um, on the you know, on the weekends he might drink a he might get through a bottle if he's out. However, Jake used to also be very into the drink, but he doesn't really drink much anymore. I'm gonna I don't know who I'm gonna pick. Because Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna go for Ed because he loves a glass of wine. Uh, when he's stressed or when he's like when he wants to like settle down for the weekend and that's kind of why I stopped drinking it was more because like I wasn't a good drunk um, whereas Ed is like real funny and he's like life of the party when he has a few so uh, yeah I'm gonna go for Ed who is the trousers in this system? da 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 gotta be Ed <laughs> uh, Ed will definitely wear the trousers um, he's always got a hold over me so I definitely say it's him. Okay, there's sort of a dynamic, I reckon, because Jamie leads the way on our system, but to be fair, if I stamp my feet hard enough, it is me. So Jamie gives the rules, but I can sometimes bend them rules. Who talks the most? Ha! <laughs> uh, that's probably me because I can like ramble and uh, just talk crap sometimes, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for me. Um, but that's not a bad thing, I don't think. Jake, he's like a little jibber jabber. He's probably cute though. I don't mind listening to Jake, like when he waffles, he's a good waffler. Who's the biggest foodie? That would definitely be me. I love my food. I love my food so much. Um, I sort of do eat for a man's body more than a woman's body. Unfortunately for Jess. But yes, I love food. Gotta be Jamie. He's well into his food. Like all sorts of food. You can go like all the way up to like posh French cuisine down to the bloody corner shop for a kebab. And Jamie's well happy. So Jamie's like the biggest foodie. That would be... Jamie, because he loves his food. He does love his food, but I have to put an upside, like, Ed is really good with food, like, he can cook food, but he doesn't really eat the food. I guess then, yeah, it would be more Jamie. So Jamie is a winner of Biggest Foodie. Oh my god, I'm gonna get stuck. No, to be fair, it was fantastic. It really was. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you, babe. That's all I wanted. I'm, no, no. Okay, that's all I wanted. I'm keeping this. This is mine. <laughs> okay, all done.